live from the YouTubes. It's Sunday, June 27th. My goodness, it's already almost July. It's going to be my birthday month. We're not there yet. I don't, I don't do the whole birthday month thing. I'm just like, it's my birthday. If we celebrate, great. If we don't, whatever. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to the channel. I see a lot of you guys already in the chat room. Sorry, I took a couple of extra minutes today. I was working on some things and had to get my old trusty Captain America chair just so I'd have some back support during this one hour live stream. But uh, appreciate you guys for being here. Your patience, not only with uh, my videos, this channel, but also what's going on behind that blue screen over there, because this is not the set. Uh, this is not um, this is the area for the set, but the set is actually covered up right now. So you guys can't see anything. Still working on that. Want to make sure it looks uh, just the way I want it to before we start shooting videos on there. But I want to say thank you guys for joining me today. And let's get into the chat room and see what you guys are saying and have been saying. I know there's a little bit of uh, conversation going on before. Here we go. What's going on, guys? Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's nice to see everyone filmed any reviews today. Not today, but I filmed um, one yesterday, a couple on Friday. It's been a very busy weekend, and uh, it's nice to see everybody uh, joining the chat today. What is up? Already some recommendations, and um, I can't wait to talk to you guys and answer some questions. Uh, but first, as always, uh, we can hit on some of the topics in the actual uh, title today, but only if you guys want to. So if you want to talk a little bit about that Shang-Chi trailer, or if you want to talk a little bit about that Halloween Kills trailer, you guys be sure to make that the focus of some of your questions at the start, and uh, we'll answer those. And then we'll just get into the normal Ask Me Anything, where you guys can ask me whatever you want. And I just appreciate you all for being here and supporting this channel. Now, as always, uh, the route to go for questions to make sure they're sticking on screen and to support this channel, of course, uh, is Super Chat. And if you're here and you want to smash the thumbs up button, because that's what YouTubers say, smash it, um, it, it, it helps. It helps a lot. It's the whole reason why this channel is doing what it's doing. Uh, but without that, without you, uh, I would not be here. So I just want to say thank you so much. But of course, I want to get into your all's questions. Uh, and we do have a super chat at the start. So let's get there before we lose it. Hey, my guy. Hey, Jose, what's going on, my friend? Uh, did you see the boys new castings? Lori Holden, uh, most notable. I didn't see all of them, Jose. I, I didn't see all of the castings. I saw Lori. I saw... Um, one more. Let me see if I can pull that up super quick just so we can talk about it. As you guys know, uh, The Boys is one of my absolute favorite shows on television. So I definitely want to um, cover the next season as much as I possibly can. Let's see here. Casting characters, details. If you guys have any more, um, let's see. Oh, adds reoccurring cast for season three. Here we go. So we've got uh, Sean Patrick Flannery. Whoa, I didn't know Sean Patrick Flannery is Okay, that's cool. See, I missed a couple of these things. Um, Roswell actor Nick, what? Oh, my goodness. So we have a couple of new cast members for the boys uh, joining our cast and crew that we know. So, yeah, I'm very excited. It looks like um, we have a few individuals signing up for this new season, some new heroes, some new villains. We know we have a, a new Captain America-esque villain coming down the pipeline, so I'm super excited for this new season, Jose. As you guys know, the first two seasons I was just in love with, and I can't wait to see what we get next. Uh, let's see if we have any more questions here. Jose, thank you for the super chat. Halloween Kills, yes, I did watch the trailer. Now, I didn't get a chance to react to it. The two trailers dropped while I was at uh, Fast and Furious 9, so I chose to react to Shang-Chi. But I'll tell you what, um, what did you think? I really liked it. I did. I, I thought the brand new Halloween trailer was unexpectedly interesting. All right, we're going to get your scares. We're going to get your classic, uh, your classic Halloween isms. Uh, but I thought it was extremely interesting from the standpoint that, you know, they're coming, they're coming in um, to, I guess, take away the fire and not burn the house down entirely. She's screaming, no, please don't do this. Jamie Lee Curtis, her performance looks incredible, by the way. And then one last time, <laughs> as always, we have to take down Michael. We get some trademark kills. We get uh, this uh, pumpkin head, which is terrifying. I mean, it just looks, it looks visually stunning. 
visually stunning, which is something I don't often say for a horror sequel. So I am definitely excited to see what route they go. Uh, hopefully they eliminate a little bit of that cheese from the teenage storyline in the first movie. But again, I like the first movie quite a bit. So I'm super excited for this. As you guys know, Halloween is one of my absolute favorite horror franchises. Uh, the first Halloween is probably top five horror movies for me ever. And I like the remake or the, uh, the, the last film, I guess, reboot revival. Is that what it is? Uh, regardless, I'm very excited for this movie. I thought the trailer was extremely interesting, which is something that, um, I was afraid we wouldn't get. I didn't know how the sequel will go. Swell said I wasn't a big fan of the Halloween Kills trailer. I love the Candyman trailer. However, uh, jumped up my anticipated list a lot. I See, I like the Halloween Kills trailer quite a bit, quite a bit, unexpectedly so. Uh, but I also really like the Candyman trailer. I mean, this could be a great year for horror. Now, it, it didn't get off to a great start with False Positive. I guess that was the beginning because we also had A Quiet Place Part 2. But False Positive, not the best. But I think Candyman could be really, really good. The new Candyman trailer was awesome. Uh, but in terms of Halloween Kills, I'm super excited. I thought it was really, really good. I, we had another question here, too. Uh, here we go. From Hugo, what do you think is happening with the Abomination and Wong in Shang-Chi? Shang you know what that scene reminded me of? It reminded me in the the new Pokemon movie uh, with Ryan Reynolds when they go to that like underground fight club where all these different Pokemon were taking on each other because, of course, they're not allowed to have the battles in that city. That's what it reminded me of. Um, and when Abomination is going up against Wong, first of all, Wong should be able to easily take on Abomination. So I don't know what's going on there, but it was really cool. And I'm not entirely sure. Let me switch this over here. I'm not entirely sure what the route is that they're going. Is Shang-Chi going in to find help? Is he trying to find someone to help him take down uh, one of the villains? Is he going after Wong and we just so happen to see Abomination? So how it ties in is going to be interesting for me. But just the fact that we have Abomination back and he's much more comic accurate than he used to be. I mean, we knew he would kind of mutate into this version of Abomination. We just didn't know if we would ever see him again. And he's already confirmed to be in the She-Hulk movie. So I am super excited to see what route they go there. And even though I really love the trailer, um, that moment really, I mean, you got, yeah, yeah, you saw it in my reaction. Uh, that moment really freaked me out. So super excited uh, to see where they go with that. All right, guys, let's get into some more questions here. Did you see the Jurassic World Dominion preview before Fast 9? I did not because I actually ended up going Cinemark XD instead of IMAX. And the only reason is because our IMAX screening wasn't until 8 p.m. Um, the Cinemark was 7. You know, I obviously wanted to get my review out there. Uh, and then it turns out I didn't get it out to the next morning anyway because the Shang-Chi trailer. So <laughs> I guess I could have went to the 8 o'clock. Uh, but no, I did not get to see it. Unfortunately, I wish it would have played in front of Cinemark XD. Uh, let's see. I hope you're having a great day so far. Thank you so much. Um, do you think that is Wong and the Shang? I guess it could be someone else, but yeah, I, I think it, it to me it looks very much like Wong. And I saw that he was on set or in the same place that they were filming Shang Chi. So I mean, it's got to be him, right? Thoughts on Rick and Morty, season five, episode one. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, just watched it last night. Just watched it last night. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was hilarious crazy Morty going back to the world over and over and the civilization slowly turning against him. Um, so, uh, just <laughs> the hijinks with Rick and his, you know, um, the, the villain that we've never seen before. Uh, Mr. Nimbus. That, that was his name. I was trying to think of his name, Mr. Nimbus and the weird stuff going on with Morty's parents. Uh, great episode. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Can't wait to watch the next one. All right, let's keep going here, guys. We've got thoughts on the trailer for Ted Lasso too. Can't wait. Can't wait. You guys are the reason I watched uh, started watching Ted Lasso. So I am thoroughly, thoroughly excited to see what we get next. It's an awesome, awesome show so far. Uh, Clayton with the super chat. Austin, are you going to watch the Forever Purge? I am. I am. I uh, I don't know. that Nashville, which is where I go to watch movie screenings, they're very weird about screenings. So I don't know if I'll get a screening for it. If, if they have it, I'll get one. They don't, I won't. But I'm super excited to see if this movie is good because I haven't really liked the last couple. The, the second Purge is still my favorite, the one with Frank Grillo. And um, I'm, you know, curious based off of this 
you know, the nonstop perch, it's going to keep going. It's, it's a cool idea, but, you know, the execution... Sometimes it's just not there. So we will have to see, but I think it's going to be uh, at least entertaining. At least I hope. Um, hey, Austin, have you seen Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist? It recently didn't get renewed. Would love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, it's really well made. You know, I was super excited to watch that. A lot of that, well, that was Zachary Levi, right? Uh, a lot of that had to do with the cast. Um, it was an interesting premise for a show. I liked the first trailer, so... You know, getting canceled, it, it, it's happening more often with some of these shows. I know the one that was trending on Netflix recently that everybody said was good, Manifest, um, just got canceled. Netflix didn't opt to bring it back, which is unfortunate. So a lot of shows getting canceled right now, but that's definitely one. I don't know if I'll ever have time to check it out, to be honest with you. But it looks nice. So if I ever get the chance, um, say my wife ever starts watching it, I'll probably watch it. But uh, yeah, thanks for the recommendation. Um, Sour Lemon says, I need a new show, Austin. What would you recommend? Not a comedy, because I'm finishing Big Bang Theory. And that one was so long ago. I want something serious. Um, well, let's see. It, it's according on, do you want a longer show? Do you want a shorter show? One that I always recommend that nobody watched is a show called Bodyguard on Netflix. It was a limited series starring Richard Madden. And it's only, uh, I think, four, maybe six episodes. Um, it seemed like nobody really talked about it that year. And uh, I got my parents to watch it. They loved it. Suspense, um, a great actor, obviously, at the forefront. Lots of intensity. Just a wonderful overall show. So body, Bodyguard's a recommendation, and it's not going to take you too long to get through. So it's, it's definitely a great one. All right. Um, should I purchase Nobody or Wrath of Man? Haven't seen either yet. Uh, for me, it's Nobody. Look, Wrath of Man, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It reminded me of um, Dragged Across Concrete, just not quite on that level. So really good. And obviously, you know, he's a great director. But I would go Nobody because, you know, it has all of the John Wick isms, obviously written by the guy who did John Wick. But at the same time, it kind of carves its own path and and becomes tonally aware of what it is. So, yeah, if I had to choose one there, I'd choose Nobody. But I think both are solid films. Both got good reviews from me. Alex says Halloween Kills comes out on my birthday. I'm excited, Alex. That is awesome. You're going to get a heck of a birthday gift, I think. Candyman trailer killed it. I agree, Yeti Fawn. Uh, that movie could, be end up, uh, could end up being one of the best. I don't want to say the best because Quiet Place Part 2. One of the best horror movies of the year. I think it looks great. Um, have you seen the empty man coming to HBO max in July? No, I didn't see it. Uh, it was one of those movies that just kind of slipped under the radar, but I've actually heard, even though I've heard some negatives, I've heard quite a few positives for that film. Was it Stuckman that gave it a good, someone gave it a good review and it piqued my interest. Um, normally when I know I'm probably not going to watch a movie, I'll go and watch all the reviews, but that was one that actually got some positivity that I wasn't expecting. So I'm interested to see what happens there. We've got, um, is Hulk and Shang-Chi, because they showed Abomination, what are your thoughts about it? You know, I, I don't know if Hulk's going to show up. I think it's just going to be the Abomination, but it's just nice to have that Easter egg just to tie in that movie once more. We got General Ross, which was great, but now we're literally getting all of the pieces and the elements, so it's going to be super, super great. Isn't there news that Far From Home trailer is exclusively on before Black Widow? Got my ticket. Jack, I've not heard that. I've not heard that, and honestly, I don't know if that's going to be the case. I would love it. <laughs> Let me tell you, I would love to get a Spider-Man trailer before Black Widow. I would freak out so hard in the theater. I mean, that would make the theatrical experience worth it. Now, by the way, um, I am going to be seeing Black Widow digitally tomorrow, hopefully. Disney, come on. Uh, but... Beyond that, I do want to see Black Widow in the theater opening night. So I'm going to try to do both just to see what that big screen ex experience is like with that movie. Um, so I'm interested. I'm interested to see what happens. Mike says, I'm behind on Rick and Morty. I was, uh, well, I wasn't behind, but I wanted to watch episode one. Finally watched it. My wife was actually begging me to watch it. I've turned her into a Rick and Morty fan. I do not feel bad. It's awesome. She's even talking about it at work now. Which is great. I love it. Austin, first 20 numbers in pi. 3.14. <coughs> Did you guys hear something in there? All right, thanks for the question. Uh, are you a fan of Danny Phantom? Uh, yes. Oh, man, Danny Phantom was one of those shows that I grew up with, absolutely loved. I would love to see some sort of a, a bringing it back. You know, they're doing the Rugrats again. They're doing iCarly again. Bring back Danny Phantom. That was the show, man. That was the, that show was awesome. That show was awesome. Um, Job Diaz says thoughts on the Batman, the long Halloween part one. Yeah, I was a little late, a little late. I finally saw it. I got to review it on Letterboxd, 
but I can tell you that I liked it quite a bit. I didn't love it like I wanted to. A couple of elements that, you know, they did expand on the comic maybe even more than I expected, but there were some things that I wish they would have worked on. Regardless, I liked it a lot. Really good start. I can't wait to see part two, and I will review part two on this channel 100%. And that may be when I do my DC animation tier list. I've been putting it off. I've got a couple of movies I still need to see, but I've got until the end of July to watch all these DC movies. That may that may do it. All right. Uh, Kakashi says, uh, why don't you watch anime? Oh, I do. I, I do watch anime. I just don't tend to review it very often. That's the thing. Because my reviews like to cover the here and the now, right? And, and a lot of it has to do with streaming. Um, when we get one on Netflix, I'll cover it. I covered Godzilla. I covered um, a couple of animes this year. But I kind of focus on streaming. Anime is kind of one of those things, and I have these things. Rick and Morty is another example. The Office is another, another example. I watch. I don't have to write notes. I can relax. I can just whew, don't have to worry about reviewing it, and I just enjoy it. And oftentimes, you know, when I'm going back and watching anime, Attack on Titan is one of those examples when I just don't have to worry about a review. And that's not a slide against what I do. It's just sometimes I like the fun watches that I don't have to, uh, you know, partake in the note taking. Uh, and that's kind of what a lot of these anime shows are for me. Uh, going back and watching, rewatching Dragon Ball Z, rewatching One Punch Man season two recently, Attack on Titan, uh, you know, just shows like that. Or, or, but when they're new and they're on streaming and they're in the now, then I review them. All right. Let's see. Doesn't the concept of the Forever Purge ruin? The yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. I prefer Bo Burnham inside playlist. You know what? I prefer that to everything right now. I'm thinking about what, what do you guys think? I'm thinking about doing a Bo Burnham uh, top 10 songs ever. I'm going through all of his songs, picking my 10 favorites. Uh, I'm sure a lot of them will be from inside, but I've been watching Bo Burnham for almost nine years now. So I, I feel like it's time for me to talk about his work. Um, what do you guys think about that? Let me know. What do you think of this Amazon show called Bosch? Uh, did you ever check it out? I would highly recommend it. It's one of the best TV dramas ever. You know, I never watched it. I know it got a new season. Um, if that's the one I'm thinking of, it's the one that got a new season. So I'm interested. I'm interested. Maybe I'll check it out one day. You never know. Uh, but uh, I think I'm so behind on it at this point. It's going to be tough. But I've, I've heard it's really good. Bodyguard got nominated for an Emmy. Very great show. I agree. What a, what a great show. What an absolutely great show. Uh, David says, Michael Mann, tier list. He hasn't done a bad film. Ooh, that would be fun. That would be fun. It would have to be relevant, David, so find something to tie it into. That's what I like to do with all of my tier lists, but I'll tell you what, that's not a bad idea at all. Um, I love me some Michael Mann. I love me some Michael Mann for sure. Uh, let me make sure, guys, we're good. Oh, yeah, AJ Taylor. So we got uh, had a Friday night trio of Source Code, Lars, and The Real Girl. Uh, ooh, and Inside Lewin Davis. Ah! Uh, Lars and the Real Girl being my favorite. Really, Lars the Real Girl being your favorite? Interesting. So I have I actually haven't seen Lars and the Real Girl. I have seen Source Code. I have seen Inside Lewin Davis, and I love both of those movies. Absolutely, Source Code is a great time bending movie. Inside Lewin Davis is a very underrated, underrated film with Oscar Isaac that not a lot of people talk about. So that's interesting. I might need to see Lars and the Real Girl then, if that was your favorite. That is very, very cool. That is very cool. Uh, AJ, always appreciate you sharing your Friday night trios with us. Uh, always curious to see which one your favorite is. And it's nice to see that that was a movie I haven't seen. So that is very cool. Hey, Austin, how are you feeling about Loki so far? What is your favorite MCU show so far? I love your channel. You're a big inspiration. You know, Luke, I want to hold out. I want to hold out before I call Loki my favorite because we're only halfway through. Out of the two that we've gotten, uh, it is WandaVision. That is my favorite which is unexpected, uh, was unexpected because I, I I was dying to see Falcon Winter Soldier. I liked it, just not as much as WandaVision. Loki, episode three was a kind of, you know, maybe a bit too much of a filler episode for me, but I still, you know, enjoyed it for, for what it is. Uh, I will have to see what happens. And you guys will get my thoughts after Loki. And then after Loki ends and after I get to see Black Widow, you're going to get an updated Marvel tier list for me, including the TV shows which I've never done before. It's going to be very tough, but I'm going to attempt to do it for you guys. So excited uh, about that. I have Hereditary, a top 10 horror movie of all time. Do you agree? Dr. Rios, I do. I agree with you. I think Hereditary is one of the best, absolute best ever, ever. 
Uh, it's amazing. We almost, my wife and I almost watched Midsommar last night, but instead we watched the Rick and Morty premiere. So, <laughs> and then one episode of the, the Chef Ramsay show where he goes to the different countries and, 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 and cooks against somebody. That show's amazing. National Geographic is on Disney Plus. Go check it out. I love me some Chef Ramsay. Uh, it was great. Oh, yeah. Uh, your thoughts on Kurosawa. Uh, amazing. Amazing. I mean, that would be, man, that would be a tier list, wouldn't it? Uh, it would require, there's still a couple of movies I haven't seen. A couple of movies I haven't seen, but um, absolutely Mount, well, maybe Mount Rushmore. We, we, we will have to, I need to dive a bit deeper into the filmography, but maybe Mount Rushmore. Um, what Nickelodeon show will you need a reboot of? Uh, Danny Phantom. Come on now. Danny Phantom would be amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, but otherwise, Jimmy Neutron. That's kind of one that I've been saying lately. I, I, I would love to see Jimmy Neutron. Uh, Road to 100K. I'm here for it. Uh, let's get Austin there ASAP. You and you and you and you. And you are such a, a wonderful support to this channel. To the Discord, you and is incredible. Uh, I appreciate that, my friend. Um, all the work that you do, talking movies and, and, and your great work on Letterboxd. So, uh, yeah. Maybe one day. <laughs> uh, Entertainment examiner. examiner. Um, Austin, had a great time the other day. Very cool. Can't wait to join you again. What are some of your worst movie theater going experiences? Yes, we had an incredible uh, 2018 live stream part two where we brought on a lot of people on Patreon. And uh, Ian was one of those individuals. And we had such a wonderful time talking 2018 movies and, and things beyond that. And your love of cinema. Uh, that was amazing. Uh, Patreon is lit. Is that what the kids say? No. Uh, worst movie going experiences. Transformers, because Transformers, the <laughs> the last film was terrible. Um, in terms of people, I mean, I've had people, you know, phone ringing, babies crying. There's a baby crying during Fast and Furious 9. I'm just like, ah. I mean, it, numerous that I've, I've named on this channel. A guy who ha I had to, um, you know, get a little bit of a, a, a scuffle with because he kept, yeah, man, he was just, just yelling and throwing popcorn at the lady in front of him. And eventually I just had to shush him and he turned around, he said something and I'm like, why would you pay for a ticket? If you are just going to talk the whole time, I said more intense language than that. I'm a very impatient person with morons. Okay. Let me tell you, I like to be, you know, nice to people when they deserve to be nice to, but when it comes to a moron, I'm very impatient. Um, that person was a moron. So <laughs> that's a pretty bad movie going experiences before but again if you're going to pay for a ticket pay attention to the freaking movie come on don't be stupid pay attention to the movie um and don't annoy the people around you uh job thanks for the super chat <laughs> thanks for the super chat job says thoughts on fear street i'm excited i'm very very excited to see what it is i mean what we don't even know really really what it's going to be so what we're, we're gonna have to see what it ends up being so i'm excited for that um uh, don't forget about freaks. Oh, hey, yeah, we, we go. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a freaks watch along, which was, um, one of our patrons favorite movies of 2018. And I said, you know what, man? Uh, you know what, Sam? We're going to have to do this together because I've never seen it. A lot of people on my Patreon's never seen it. We're going to do a freaks watch along, uh, hopefully this week, which I'm super excited about. Hopefully the app doesn't crash on us this time. But uh, yeah, Patreon is getting crazy, man. We're doing some really fun stuff on there. Did Gareth Evans show Gangs of London come out in the USA? You know what, Max? I never saw Gangs of London. And here's the reason why. It came out in other countries, like all the other countries first. And then it finally came out in the US, but it was premiering. I think it was premiering weekly. So it was just so hard for me to you know, figure out how I'm going to review that. And, and I didn't even know really what channel it came out on, but I have heard nothing but incredible things about that show. Excuse me. And it's one that I really want to watch because I love Gareth Evans and I love the stars. So I'm going to have to, you know, I often say, I don't know if I can get to that show. This is one I've got to get to. Um, I heard it was a lot of people's favorite of last year. So I'm definitely going to try to see it, Max. I appreciate you for, for uh, reminding me of that. Um, and I appreciate the, the uh, super chat as well. Hooray for typos. Oh, it's all right, man. I, 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 I type things wrong all the time and say things wrong. Um, let's see. There's a new Indian series called Ray. It's based on, but you know what? That is, that is my bad. I really wanted to review Ray this weekend. I just got so busy. Um, I did sex life and now I wish I would have reviewed Ray. I watched the first one. I watched the first one. I loved it. Um, all about a man who is slowly forgetting things and, and, um, it, 
a story that you're kind of, it's almost like the father you're in his head. And it was a beautiful story. I didn't get a chance to finish it because my wife and I started a couple of projects with our new house. Um, so that is, that is my bad guys. That, that is one Netflix show that I wanted to get to. Don't know if I'm going to get to it. Cause we got a pack schedule this week, but maybe one day and maybe it'll be on top list. All right. Movies with cause and guys, make sure I'm not missing any of your super chats here. I think I'm all caught up. I'm just really behind on the questions today. We've got so many. Um, October 22nd, Soho, Dune, Dispatch, don't forget about Jackass 4, uh, will be crazy. Most anticipated 2022 film, not Batman. Can't wait for that 2019 list. It's going to be crazy. Oh, I'm so excited uh, over on Patreon. But most hyped, not Batman. Uh, you know, it's got to be Scorsese's picture. I'm going to assume we're going to get Scorsese, Scorsese's new movie next year. I'm going to assume. I don't know. Let me take a... Mm. Mm. Love caffeine. Um, that's probably number one. Uh, in terms of the actual, you know, top five, top ten of next year, I'd have to look because I just really don't know truly what we're getting. Uh, it's Thor next year. I know Doctor Strange is, so Doctor Strange is definitely up there. Scorsese's new movie. Uh, a couple of these films that have been shifted to next year that I'm super excited about some that I'm sure I'm forgetting. So um, those are probably the two, but you, you know, Batman, I mean, not to spoil my most anticipated list, but come on, y'all know Batman is going to be at the top. Y'all know that. Uh, Yeti Fawn says, I will be back at the cinema July 1st. Finally, are you hyped for the tomorrow war? Also shout out to the discord guys watching right now. Oh, Yeti Fawn. Yeah, we got some people. We got some people on discord. Speaking of you and, uh, rocking that Discord over there, um, and you guys supporting me over on Discord. By the way, hey, if you guys want to be a part of the Discord, the link is in the description of this video. I always make sure the link is in the live stream vids, um, so if you guys want to go check out our Discord page, every time I pop in, you guys are cracking me up, um, and it's become a lot more well-rounded over there, um, so I appreciate you all for supporting that as well. It's a big part of this channel. By the, by the way, guys, I want to pause. Um, if you are here, and you enjoy this content, I, and I say this for every video, you know, sometimes my videos, you'll see lower numbers, and a lot of that has to do with analytically, you know, the more thumbs up I get on videos, the, the better they perform, and then, of course, interaction is key. So if you guys want to drop a thumbs up for this vid, uh, for this vid, and if you want to drop a comment, maybe after it's over, of course, your live stream chats is helping right now as well. Um, Thank you so much for doing that because it helps this channel and we're on a mission to get to a hundred K right now and we're slowly getting there. Uh, but the more interaction I get from you guys, the more it helps out. It's not me begging. Don't like doing that. Please, <laughs> please. No, um, no, I, I do appreciate it, man. And it, you have no clue how much it helps out this channel. And this is my full time gig. So you know. uh, thank you guys so much for helping out there. Oh, I got this cash. What do you think about A24's upcoming film Zola? Oh, I lo it looks great. I, I can't wait to watch it. I can't wait to watch it. I mean, it looks, you know, just got really disappointed by False Positive, which is an A24 movie. And I'm, I'm hoping for some redemption here. Maybe they can redeem themselves because it's the first time I've really been that upset about an A24 movie. So let's hope Zola can be that film. It's nice that they're going to be back to back. And don't forget about The Green Knight. Oh, I can't wait for The Green Knight. Uh, favorite Wong Kar Wai. Mine is Fallen Angels. You know what, AJ? I gotta be flat honest with you. I am not entirely familiar with that director. Let's see here. I often try to be as up to date and familiar as possible. Let's see. Um, yeah, man. I, I, I am just not entirely familiar. I don't think I've seen a lot of these movies, to be honest with you. Um, no, no, I've not. And I've never seen Fallen Angels. I'm I'm very aware of Fallen Angels, but I've never seen it. So that is definitely, um, I have heard of Chunking Express, by the way. Um, that's definitely a director that I just need to get caught up on. I need to get caught up on because I'm not entirely familiar. Uh, but thanks for the question, regardless. Um, Job says, wait, <laughs> wait, what? I didn't super chat. Job, did I read a super chat of yours? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Uh, did you like Rick and Morty episode, uh, season five, episode one? Already talked about it, AJ, but uh, yes, absolutely loved it. Um, it was wacky. It was weird. It was crazy, but that's that's what I love about the show. John Lee says, are you going to see the new Nick Cage movie, Pig? Yeah, I'm very excited about that. It's pretty good. I can't wait till Green Knight comes out too. Yeah, I'm, you know, Nick Cage is... 
he's any movie he does is is going to be crazy and it's a movie I'm going to be excited for so um it could be terrible but I think it could be good as well hey Austin wonder if you're watching the Euros watching uh Stephen A Smith <laughs> Comment on soccer football is hilarious. Hope the move uh, is going well. Yes, it is. Absolutely, Joey. But uh, you know what? I'm not a big, and I've said this before, um, I'm not a big soccer guy. I'm not. And that's not a slight on the sport. You know, I used to play when I was super young, and I love anytime it's World Cup. But I just, I love American football so much. I love the NFL so much. And I love basketball, the uh, playoff time. In college, but I love college sports. I'm just not a big, um, I don't know, something about the pace of that game. I'm, I'm just not entirely, I like super fast pace. I know it can be fast paced, but I like like, you know, going down the fields. I don't know. That's just kind of how I am. But I can appreciate the sport. And um, anytime I do sit down and watch it, I have a good time. It, I'm, I'm, you know, my least favorite sport is baseball. That's just a sport that I can't, I just can't. It's, it's too slow for me. Baseball's too slow. Um, I like going to games. Uh, I've been to like five Reds games, Cincinnati Reds. But you know, sometimes I'm just. But I love all sports. I'm a big. I'm a big sports guy. Do I bin, binge the in, MCU in uh, chronological order, or do I binge the MCU in timeline order? Honestly, I've done both, and I like both. You know, the thing about chronological order, the only thing is you can't watch the post credit scenes because they don't make sense. Because the post credit scenes always tease the next movie um, in the... I'm sorry, I'm talking timeline order. Uh, the, 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 Timeline-wise, you can't binge them and watch the post credit scenes because they always have to do with the next movie that came out, right? But the way that they came out, Iron Man, you know, Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2... You'd be, you'd be able to watch the post credit scenes, um, but you're also getting more of a back and forth, going here, going there, prequel, sequel kind of story. So it all comes down to how you want to do it. If you want the post credit scenes, I would go just the order that they released. But in terms of the timeline, I enjoyed doing it that way too. My wife and I did that last year and it was it was fun. It was fun. So um, either way, I think works really well. Forgot about the Green Knight. Oh, I can't wait for the Green Knight. Clayton says, what is the worst movie you've seen from your favorite director? I'll also be watching your review of False Positive soon. I hear it's kind of bad. Well, it was. I, I've never felt that sad about an A24 movie, but I felt sad. But a lot of my peers liked it. A lot of my um, my fellow reviewers really enjoyed it. So um, I just, I, I, a lot of critics enjoyed it. Actually, surprisingly, I just, you know, that's one of those. How do you feel compared to other critics, Austin, in a movie that you didn't like, that they liked? That I guess this is one of those because I just didn't like it. Um, I just watched The Master. It's so good. Oh, my God. Movie lover. That movie is awesome. Performances galore. Hey, Austin, uh, what, do you get ex uh, what are you more excited for, the new Patrick Star show or the new Guardians of the Galaxy game? Probably the Guardians of the Galaxy game. I don't game as often as I should because I'm so focused on movies and you guys, but... Um, but I, I mean, I'm excited. The Patrick Star show worries me, but I don't think it's horrible that they're doing these spinoffs. Of course, they're going to do spinoffs. But at the same time, you know, SpongeBob lately just hasn't been what it was when it was um, when it first came out those first five seasons. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, thoughts on the Halloween Kills trailer. Talked about it a little bit at the beginning, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was um, an, a, a surprising, a surprising amount of tension and the story looks great. The story looks absolutely great. So I'm very, you know, surprisingly excited for that film. One, two, three rock fan says, are you looking forward to the Jerry Seinfeld pop tart Netflix movie? That's a sentence I never thought I would say. Yeah, that seems very uh, interesting, but Jerry Seinfeld getting into movies. This is what we need. This is what we need. And I'm very excited to see what he does. It's weird, you know, but you hear some of these stories and, you know, like American pickle, the Seth Rogen movie that that seemed weird, and that movie was fine. Um, but I'm excited to see Jerry Seinfeld. Man, I think he has it in him. He has a great performance in him, um, whether he's in the movie or not. I know he's just producing it, but uh, I'm excited. Ryan O'Toole is in the chat. Hello, Austin. Hello, Ryan. Nice to see you, my friend. Uh, I need to go watch your latest review, by the way. Jacob says, uh, "I have a director swap: Gavin O'Connor's Creed, Ryan Coogler's Warrior." Oh, wow. Both movies incredible. Ah, uh, the thing is, I prefer Warrior. I prefer Gavin O'Connor's Warrior to Creed. But 
to know that Ryan Coogler didn't direct Creed would hurt because that's such like his baby. So I'm actually going to go Ryan Coogler's Warrior, which is surprising because I like Warrior more, but I think they're both amazing. Like they're both two of my, maybe my two favorite fight movies of all time. So that's the one I'm going to choose. But my goodness, what a director swap there, man. That, that is such a great question. Uh, this year, Eurovision was seen over 200 million people, and I think you should watch it too. It's free on YouTube. Yeah, that's one of those things that I just didn't know about. And I know it's like it was the talk of the world, um, but I just, you know, I never, I love music, but I'm not to the point to where I love it to that degree. Uh, but man, I, I was really missing out. I was really missing out. So I definitely need to go check it out because I know a lot of people watch that. Uh, but thank you for letting me know that Eurovision is on YouTube. I did not know that. I had no clue. Uh, watching The Handmaiden after this. Oh, funny, that's one of the movies my wife and I saw last night when we were looking for films. Um, I've heard great things. I've never seen it, though. Um, Austin, I could be wrong, but don't you have a dog and cats? Colin, I only have a dog. But you know what? We have mice in our garage. So we might have to get a cat. I've already killed three mice. So my wife was terrified. I didn't, I'm not really scared of mice, but let me tell you, it's, you, you buy a house, you don't expect these things to happen, but that happened. That's for sure. <laughs> um, let's see. We've got, um, what do you think is going to happen in Loki episode four? You know, I, man, I, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. This week was, was, was so similar to a filler episode. Uh, some great things in this week's episode. Absolutely. But where do they go from here? Well, I need Mobius back. I need Mobius back. I want to see Mobius encounter Loki. I want the true villain to reveal themselves, which right now it does kind of look like the villains are the TVA. I want to start learning things about the TVA, and, and maybe some revelations will come for Mobius. Um, but I'm just excited to see where they go this week. I, I can't wait. It's one of those shows that every week I'm just hyped out of my mind for. Austin, I would love to hear your thoughts on Ride or Die, 2021 Japanese movie on Netflix. I accidentally watched it. Warning, hard R. I, I heard about that one, and I didn't review it because that was a busy weekend, uh, but I heard good things, so I'm very, very interested. Eddie Fawn says, yes, get, get a cat. Yeah, if we got mice, we going to need to get a cat because let me tell you, it is not not good. Uh, Austin, did you hear that Vin Diesel and the other Fast and Furious characters want to do a collab with the <laughs> With the Transformers, what do you think? I think it would fit tonally. I think it would fit very well, except for the the you know raw emotion that we get from Diesel's character. If you cut down on the seriousness and just go full crazy and chaotic, then yeah, I'm I'm all on board with that. Give me chaotic Transformers versus Fast and Furious. Again, I'm not that big on the franchise though. I like some of the movies, but the franchise as a whole, I'm just like yeah. And this movie again kind of confirmed that for me. Style swap. Here we go. The Office directed like a sitcom with a laugh track, or Friends shot like a mockumentary. Well, I think the magic of both shows is that they are those specific styles. But if I had to choose, I'd go Friends like a mockumentary. I would love to see that. That would be because I think The Office is so specific to that style. I don't know how it would work. But again, you could say the same thing about Friends. I would go Friends shot like a mockumentary. I think that would be incredibly interesting. So, wow, great question, Flash Flick. Great question. Interstellar or Inception? I've got to go Inception, but I love me some Interstellar. Slowly moving up this list of uh, Nolan movies. It's it's just incredible. Um, I'll have to update my Nolan list with his next film because Interstellar is moving up so much, but it's so, so good. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brandon says, Netflix question. Have you seen the A-list, the British uh, mystery thriller uh, that tends to be cheesy, but still fun. Season two came out. Please answer. Brandon, thank you so much for the question. Uh, hang on one second. I'm getting a call. Who's calling me? Should I answer it on air? All right, hang on. Let me see. Who is this? Cincinnati? Do I have a Cincinnati number? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, don't know who this is. Do I have a voicemail? I don't it usually says spam. Uh, regardless, I have not seen the A-list Brandon. So, you know, it's one of those, when when a new season of a show comes out, oftentimes I'll try to catch up uh, on the show and then kind of, you know, give my review. But I haven't seen the A-list unless I just completely forgot about it. But I don't think I ever reviewed it, so I don't think I've seen it. So uh, maybe I'll have to see it one of these days. Did you say something to to my Tomorrow War question, uh, Yeti Fawn? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um 
which question was that specifically going to watch the tomorrow war? Would you say it was your first? Exp I, can't, I can't remember if that was your question or not. I know I've had a couple of tomorrow war questions, but um, I did acknowledge that super chat Yeti Fawn. Uh, so I'm excited for the tomorrow war. I hope I get a screener this week. They told me I would get a screener. I'm not entirely sure. They said they would note my interest. So maybe if they send screeners out, is that this Friday, by the way, I believe it is. So hopefully I will get one. It looks very, very interesting. Um, we've got another great question here. Um, friends shot like a mockumentary would be incredibly awkward. It would, but I, I would much rather that than the office not shot, shot like a mockumentary. I think that would be better than the office. Um, Austin, many great horror movies coming this year. Unlike last year, your thoughts. Yeah, I, I just hope we get some great ones. Candy, man. We've already had a great, a great one in A Quiet Place Part 2, which is more thriller in my opinion, but it definitely has horror, so I'm considering it a horror. So I'm just, um, I'm very excited to see what we get this year. It's going to be a good year in my opinion. Uh, John Lee says, I came in late, so I'm not sure if you've discussed this, but do you think Halloween is going to go more supernatural route with Michael? How are they going to explain him surviving all of this? John, I, I definitely think that's the case. I mean, how do, how do, how do you explain that without going the supernatural route? I mean, the guy just doesn't die. And then in the trailer, we get, we do get shades and hints of Michael Myers kind of going that route. So maybe that's how we start getting these answers. I mean, you have to, right? There's no way you can survive this stuff and just being a, a, a crazy, wild human. So I don't know. I'm not entirely sure, but I think they're definitely going to go supernatural. All right. Um, we've got uh, great questions here. I don't like the look of the Tomorrow War. Yeah, it could be interesting. It could be interesting, but I don't entirely know. I don't entirely know if it's going to be good. Uh, but Chris Pratt seems to have a lot of confidence, so... Uh, would, would you love to see a Rick and Morty Tenet episode? <laughs> yeah, they tend to play on these modern shows. They did an Inception style episode. So I think Tenet would be, uh, absolutely incredible. What did you think of fatherhood? Well, my review is on this channel right now, Executioner, but I can say I was more positive than negative. I, I liked the movie. Uh, so you can go check that out right now. Favorite Batman character. Well, it's cliche, but it's the Joker, you know? So it's one of those that, I could go deep, man. I, I like Firefly. I like Clayface. I like um, uh, Barbara Gordon. I like all of these characters. But at the end of the day, you've just got to go the one that, you know, has the biggest impact. And that for me is the Joker. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a character that I resonate with. Not in that way, but a character that's hit me hard every time he's been on screen. All right. Hey, Austin, I'm at the beach right now, <laughs> but I saw the notification, so I took a break from the sunlight to watch your stream. Hey, that's cool, man. That's cool. I hope you're having a great time. hope you're having a great time, and I can't wait to go to the beach. Maybe soon. One of these days. Uh, sup, Austin? Guess what? Today is Tobey Maguire's birthday, also known as Spider-Man. I'm going to watch one of his movies today. Happy birthday to Toby, and um, it'll be a better birthday if you um, pop up in Spider-Man No Way Home. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys saw on Twitter, someone approached him and asked him if he's going to be in Spider-Man No Way Home. And he just winked at the guy. Uh, so even Toby at this point is not really hiding anything. Man, I, I'm sold. I am sold on Toby and Andrew. Even if it's just a cameo, I'm all right with that. Because we want the folks to be on Tom Holland. Uh, but this could be a full-on beginning of the Spider-Verse type of movie. So I'm super excited to see what happens with No Way Home. I just want a trailer, but I don't want the trailer to reveal anything spectacular spectacular um what are your five uh top five cartoon network shows of the 2010s oh frank that'd be one i'd have to think about i can't i can't pull that off the top of my head i mean i know adventure time and regular show would be in there uh those would be probably the two you know 2010 though that was the time when i kind of stopped watching cartoon network as heavy as i did before because before we had Dexter's Laboratory and Powerpuff Girls and and all these shows, Courage the Cowardly Dog, uh, Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy that I loved and I grew up with. 2010 is when I started getting a bit older. And then, you know, obviously 2013, I graduated high school. Not obviously, you guys didn't know that. Uh, but in terms of the 2010s, I did watch regular show and I did watch Adventure Time very, very often. So those would be the two that resonated with me the most. Uh, today, I plan on watching Spider-Man 2 for the first time. That was before finding out it's his birthday. That is crazy. Oh, I love that. I love Spider-Man 2. It's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. 
Swells, thoughts on the Babylon casting? I, I don't know. Did they cast someone recently? If they cast someone recently, I didn't get to see it. But if you're talking about Toby's inclusion in the Babylon uh, cast, and then, of course, you know, uh, Margot took the place of Emma, right? And then we've got a, a kind of a well-rounded cast, right? I think it looks great. I'm very excited. Babylon is next year. Uh, now I believe if I'm correct about that. So that would be up there in my most anticipated movies of next year. Austin, the worst animated movie you've ever seen. Uh, emoji movie sucks. Uh, the, uh, the, what's the polar bear movie with that? That movie sucks. Uh, man, there's been some bad ones. There's been some bad movies. I'm also losing my voice, which is kind of crazy. Ah, man. There's one in particular that I'm thinking of, but I can't off the top of my head. I can't really, I can't really pull it. Um, I'll have to go look at my letterbox, but I'll, the, those are the two that just come to the forefront immediately. And then, of course, like the really low budget animated films that I've seen before. Uh, yeah, Norman, Norman the North. Uh, that's Rob Schneider as the polar bear. So <laughs> that was something I never thought I would need to see. Uh, Who is your favorite Spider-Man actor? Who's your favorite Spider-Man actor? So the way that that's phrased is who's the 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 actor that... The actor that plays Spider-Man that I resonate the most with is Andrew Garfield. In terms of their portrayal of Spider-Man, it's Tom Holland. But in terms of the one that I have the most nostalgia for, it's Tobey Maguire. So, in a way, I think all three are incredible in their own way. Like, I grew up with Tobey, so obviously I have this love for Tobey. He was so good in the role. Tom is the most comic-accurate version of Spider-Man. Now... Is that character the most comic accurate version? No, because they've kind of taken their own path with that character. But Tom as Peter is the most comic accurate version, no doubt in my mind. Andrew is probably the best actor of the three. So toss up who's the best. But at the end of the day, it, it, it doesn't matter who's the best, to be honest with you. It matters what they're doing right now and the movie that they're in at the moment. So yeah, I think all three have done great as Spider-Man and I would love to see all three on screen at the same time. Sony, come on, Sony. <laughs> Do you like American beauty? Yes. I love, I love that film. I think it's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> Ruby Tuesday. Hi Austin. I remember you. Do you remember me? Oh, D Ruby Tuesday. Come on, man. I, I love watching your videos. I, I always wait till I do my review first, Ruby, but I, then I, I go and watch you. But um, great, great channel. Great channel on YouTube. Absolutely. Um, I need to message you, by the way. I, I We needed to uh, get together and talk, but I just got so busy with the house. But as soon as I get settled, my friend will do that. Um, favorite restaurant. Now we're getting into the good questions. Come on. Um, man. I did. That's tough. If we're talking fast food, I love Outback, Olive Garden, Red Lobster. Those are three great fast food restaurants. If we're talking, you know, dine in, we've got some local places. Um, Jeff Ruby's, Malone's. These are all places you all have probably never heard of. In terms of like vacation places, I love a good Irish pub. There's a couple of Irish pubs that I absolutely love um, that are spectacular. I love restaurants that, you know, come to your seat and cut the meat off. And then there's numerous ones that do that. A good sushi restaurant, man. I like, I just love, there's a lot of things. I will eat anything though. I love food. Ruby Tuesday's favorite restaurant is the Ruby Tuesday. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, Daniel says smiley face. I love smiley faces. Uh, can I talk to you, sir? The indie filmist. Uh, yes, maybe. All right. Am I following you on Twitter? If I'm following you on Twitter, I can talk to you. Um, let's see. We had a question from Brandon says, I'm doing a Harry Potter rewatch and watched Stone in Chamber. Have to watch Prisoner of Azkaban next. Uh, thoughts on the possible Harry Potter series coming to HBO. I don't like the idea. Yeah, it worries me. It worries me because, you know, they did uh, the Fantastic Beasts and the first one was good. The, the second one, not so much. And anytime you do something like that, I don't think it could ever take away the magic of the movies. But at the same time, yeah, I just, I really want the quality to be up there. Uh, but I love me some Harry Potter. I love some Harry Potter. All right, let's see. Uh, what big A-list Hollywood actor would you like to see do a horror movie? Well, that's very simple. And I know Jill and Hall's done horror before, but I want to see him in a full-on conjuring style horror movie. Jake Jill and Hall is my answer. Do you love South Park? I don't say I, I love South Park just because I don't watch it as much anymore. 
But when I was growing up, I really, really liked South Park. It was so funny, so ridiculous, so hilarious at the same time. Um, who do you find yourself listening to lately? Uh, it's well, Bo Burnham. I mean, that's all I've listened to. That's all I've listened to lately. That's it. Um, I love movie scores. I like to listen to I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. Uh, I love listening to movie scores, like when I work out and stuff like that. Uh, but Bo Burnham is the man. Uh, I've seen Coco for the first time. It's one of the best Pixar films. Yes. Love me some Coco, guys. Uh, Coco is incredible. It's just incredible. Um, man, I can't wait. I can't wait to see Coco. Ruby Tuesday said, would you like some exclusive Batman news? Ruby, I don't know if you're pulling my leg here, but of course I would. Absolutely, freaking lutely My goodness, Ruben. Come on now. I would love that. Uh, Cash says, have you watched Physical? Cash, thank you for the super chat, by the way. Nine, uh, $9.99, $10. That is amazing. It makes a huge difference. Um, you guys don't know. When, when you send a super chat, this is my full-time gig. Uh, it means the world to me. Don't do it if you don't have the means. I don't ever want that to be the case. But if you do send a super chat, just know it means the world to me and my channel. And it always goes to good use. It always goes to my studio. It always goes to YouTube. Um, so don't think you're just sending me a super chat and I'm buying a new pair of shoes. I actually haven't had a new pair of shoes in a long time. Uh, but I just appreciate you guys so much. Uh, have you watched Physical, the new show on Apple TV starring Rose Byrne? Cash, no, I have not. I've only seen the first episode, but I thought it was really good. And I haven't seen her in anything like this before cash that is the ultimate recommendation because i haven't watched it. i have heard about it i love rose Byrne. i want to see rose Byrne do more and if this is a serious role if this is what you're talking about i want to see her do more serious so i think this could be cool i'm going to note that cash and it's it's good that it's a super chat because these safe and i can always go back and look at them um, individually, which is great. So I will definitely check it out. And if it's good enough cash, I, I might give you guys my thoughts on it. One of these days, if nothing else, ask me my next live stream and I'll try to have that first episode watched for you. Let's see. Uh, is it only me that I'm worried about Spider-Man No Way Home? It feels like it may get over stuff with too many characters. I wish they stuck with a smaller story with him on the run with Craven. John, I, I don't hate that idea at all. I don't. I, I listen, I would love to see Tom in a movie like that. That's not the route that they're going, but I do like the idea of bringing up a, a, a smaller Spider-Man film with Tom and maybe they'll scale back after this, but it looks like this is going to be a full on Spider-Verse movie. So we'll just have to see what they do with it and what route that they go. Andy says, now that you're in your new house, are you ready for me to mail you the dance? And it's <laughs> see DVD. So you can witness true cinema on one of our lists on Patreon. We talked about horrible movies from that year. And we, we all get together and we talk crappy movies. 2018 was so so much fun. Uh, but Dancing, it's on, sounded, no joke, like one of the worst movies ever made. And no one's watched it. Andy, if you send me that, you're going to be my favorite person ever. So like, <laughs> maybe that's a Patreon watch along. Maybe that's, we'll have to do that before Freaks. No, that sounds amazing yet. That's, that sounds amazing. I'm excited. <laughs> it's Andy. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, has Harrison Ford recovered yet? Not that I've heard, you know, the guy is almost 80, 80 years old. It's crazy. He's still doing this. Um, hope he recovers speedy recovery for Harrison Ford so they can get this movie out, but, uh, they just need to focus on his health right now. That's the most important thing. Um, what genre do you dislike? Well, I've always said I'm not a musical fan, but lately I've been loving musicals. I don't really like romantic comedies all that much you know it it takes a lot for a romantic comedy to really hit me in the right way um and then certain brands of horror like your typical cliche unless you go beyond that like a conjuring or an insidious or a sinister your your cliche jump scare horror that's the, usually the genre i find myself responding to the least that's why you guys don't see me watching a lot of horror movies like your super cheesy horror films um so those are the kind of the genres you know Romantic comedy, you've got to stand out. That coming-of-age romantic comedy that Netflix often does, you've got to stand out. That's why I like To All the Boys so much, because you compare that to The Kissing Booth, it's like night and day. It's like completely different. So yeah, those are kind of the, the the genres that I've... Yeah. One, two, three, rock fan. Have you been to the German restaurant in Lexington? Oh my God, it's crazy you said that. Because my brother just came to Lexington two nights ago and went to that German restaurant. That is crazy. You said that one to three rock fan. I've got to go now. 
I've got to go. That is absolutely wild because he just came in, up here. And that was the first time I had heard about it. Uh, wow. That is really wild. Ruby Tuesday said, I know someone that worked on the film. Can't say who or maybe I don't know. But he says they have over 200 hours of footage for real. No joke. Ruby, Ruben, I, I need to message you about this, man. If you have any more specific details, um, I, I need to message you. And maybe we can maybe we can get a, like a little exclusive on the Batman or something like that. Obviously we don't want to reveal too much, but um, that is so interesting. That is so interesting. Look at the Ruby Tuesday coming in with the big, with the big news stories. Um, man, I can't wait for the Batman though. My goodness, my goodness. Um, let's see. Are you going to visit India, Austin, bro? Oh my God. I would love to Paul. I would love to so much. It would be amazing. I don't know. I mean, that <laughs> it's a very expensive, but uh, one of these days, Paul, one of these days, maybe I can get a couple of people that um, I've met from there and, and welcome me with open arms, Paul. That would be, my goodness, what, what an amazing trip that would be. I uh, need videos of the DC Animated Universe, please. <laughs> Austin, yes, I know I, I, I missed the boat on uh, Long Halloween Part 1. I should have reviewed, reviewed it. I liked it. We're going to talk about Part 2, and maybe that's when I do my DC Animation tier list. Watch a couple of movies. I still got a couple, uh, but I'm excited. I'm a huge fan. My friend Luigi is wondering if you like the emoji movie. <laughs> Luigi. Um, no, <laughs> no, no, I do not like the emoji movie. I think it sucks, but there's some sweet things in it. I'll give it that. Uh, Andy, just DM me the address and I'll send it. Andy, <laughs> I, I really, I really, really will. Andy, I can't wait for that. Director swap, Paul Thomas Anderson's Pulp Fiction, Quentin Tarantino's Magnolia. Whoa, movie lover. Quentin Tarantino's Magnolia. Wow. Wow. It, they're both so specific to that specific director. And I, I think they're both equally outstanding. I may go Tarantino's Magnolia. Just imagine how crazy. I mean, you know the ending of that film, right? Imagine the whole movie being that level of crazy. My goodness. My goodness. Um, Austin says, are you from Kentucky? Well, technically, I'm not from Kentucky. I grew up in Kentucky. I moved here when I was five, uh, but I was born in Virginia. Fun fact, I was actually born in Virginia. I had a very Virginia accent when I was, no, maybe I was older than that. Oh, I'm sorry. I was probably about eight or nine when I moved to Kentucky. So about eight or nine, uh, my brother was almost five and moved to Virginia or moved to Kentucky with a very Virginian accent. So I have videos of myself and I sound like the, I'm, I'm much more proper and I've lost a lot of my Eastern Kentucky accent. Let me tell y'all, when I start getting back to seeing my folk in Eastern Kentucky, I start getting a little bit of that accent. All right. It kind of comes out. And the reason I've lost it is because in college, I took a course where you lose your accent because I was going to be a news anchor. That's what I went to college for. So I had to lose the accent. And now I don't even know what my accent now is. It's I guess it's a combination of 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 Lexington, Kentucky mixed with Eastern Kentucky mixed with still a little bit of that Virginian accent. But man, it was full on Virginian when I moved to Kentucky. It was very, very a northern. It's that northern accent. But I still say five. You know, people make fun of me when I go to visit my cousin. They're like, say five. And I'm like, five. And they're like, why don't you say five? And I'm like, I don't know. It's just how I was raised. Um <laughs> What is your most anticipated film releasing next month? Uh, the Green Knight is next month, right? It's got to be the Green Green Knight. I mean, the Green Knight looks amazing. That looks amazing. So yeah, I, I think it's. I think my answer is the Green Knight. Uh, but I'll have to look into that release schedule. Are you going to watch Euphoria season two? Oh my god, yes. Oh my god, I loved season one, Joey. Loved season one. Uh, let's see, you missed a couple of super chats. Oh, let's see which ones. Which ones did I miss here, guys? I don't want to miss any super chats. Um, sometimes this program sucks. So uh, let's see. We've got Cash looking on this other program here. If it's from Cash and Max, let me make sure I don't miss this. So there's no. We've got Sonder over here too. Uh, Andy, Max. Oh, here we go. Thank you guys so much for letting me know. The Book of Henry thoughts: best worst film of the 2010s. Max, I never saw the book of Henry. I never saw that. And I remember everybody talking about that. I remember some people talking about how disappointed and how, you know, the director, what happened here. And it was just, but at the same time, I, I saw so many people make fun of it. It made me very interested. So I need to see that because it's one of those that a lot of people make fun of, but sometimes those are the best, 
worst movies, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's extremely entertaining. Let me know if I missed another super chat, by the way, guys, um, I don't want to miss any, uh, this program sometimes gets a little wonky, but most of the time it, it displays them all correctly. Uh, love your content, Austin cast a movie, pick a genre director, two leads, two supporting actors. Oh my gosh, Sonder. Great question, man. That's a lot. Um, I've done this before, so I don't want to give the same answer here. Uh, pick a, so let's pick a genre. Let's go well, typical cliche. It's a thriller. Love me a good thriller. Uh, director. I'm going to go Christopher McQuarrie director of the most recent mission impossible entries. I love uh, uh, Christopher McQuarrie two leads. I want to start with two supporting. My, one of my supporting is Anne Dowd. Anne Dowd from The Handmaid's Tale and most recently Mass. I love her so much. I think she's incredible. Uh, my next supporting actor is going to be, let's go, um, let's go Olivia Cook. I think Olivia Cook will be a nice supporting actor in here. Two leads. Man, that's tough. So my, my answer is normally Jake Gyllenhaal for this. I don't want to go Gyllenhaal. I want to I dig a bit deeper for this film. Let's go, um, what's his name? Jack. No, oh, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name right now. Hang on, guys. Let me go Midsommar. Midsommar and go Jack Rayner will be my first lead for Midsommar. And one of my favorites of all time, Sing Street. I love Jack Rayner. And then my next lead will be, let's go, um, well, Florence Pugh's too obvious because that's just his Midsommar castmate. We got we to gotta go a little bit further than that. Uh, let's go Anya Taylor-Joy and Jack Rayner, starring in a thriller directed by Christopher McQuarrie uh, with our two supporting actresses. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, but we got to get someone a little bit older in there, too. Let's throw in like an, an older, more classic actor like a Colin Firth, like a Colin Firth as a supporting role. Now, I don't know what the what kind of movie we would be dealing with here, but a thriller with Jack Rayner and Anya Taylor-Joy. Uh, let me tell you, that would be a, I would love to see that cast director combination in that genre would be great. Um, so, man, I, I love doing stuff like that, guys. That's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun, um, man. Recommendation for the for the worst film ever, The Ruby Tuesday, Hologram Man. Oh my God, that sounds horrible. <laughs> what is Hologram Man? Man, I don't know. Oh, that would be interesting. That would be interesting. Uh, <laughs> Hologram Man, I might have to check that out. Best and worst M. Night movie in honor of old. Well, I will be doing a tier list, but I guess I could go ahead and give you my answer. Best for me is Unbreakable. Worst has got to be... Um, the Mark Wahlberg film, um, what's it called? The one with the wind. I can't even remember the name now. You guys know the one with the wind. What is that one? It was just so ridiculous. And I have no clue, no clue how that script, how people sat down and said, this script is a good script and it can make a good movie. Um, the happening, that's what it is, the happening. And uh, let's see if anybody named it here. Yeah, yeah, the happening. That's got to be the worst uh, M. Night movie for me. I just think it's ridiculous. But, oh, no, wait, hang on. He also directed After Earth and The Last Airbender. I forgot he directed The Last Airbender. Boy, boy, he's directed some clunkers. It might be The Last Airbender. Oh, boy, guys, that, that tier list is going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be. We're going to have to do a Shyamalan tier list when we get there, uh, when that movie comes out. How about the romance comedy drama? about Black Lives Matter movement that stars Elizabeth Olsen and John David Washington. Vittorio, Vittorio, come on. We're doing a script on that Black Lives Matter movie. stars Elizabeth Olsen and John David Washington. Romance, comedy, drama. Vittorio, we got a writer in the house. That's, that's just as good as my idea. That's interesting. I would love to see Olsen and, and Washington star in a movie together. I think that would be incredible. I think that would be incredible. Um, yeah, you guys, The Happening, Lady in the Water, After Earth. Oh, man, that's a that's a tough one. That's a tough one there. We're going to have to uh, uh, go through Shyamalan's films. Uh, guys, I just realized we're at the hour mark, and my wife and I have to go work on a few things around the house. Um, so I will be having to let you go here in just a second, barring any more Super Chats or any more questions uh, you guys have 
Again, I want to say thank you so much for being here. Yeti Fon says, like the stream, guys. Yeah, if you're here and you haven't, uh, you know, hit the thumbs up button, a uh, little less people than usual, but that's okay. I just appreciate you guys for being here. Um, let me know, by the way, if you guys would like me to do a little box office update video later today. We just got some of these um, numbers, uh, and I would love to talk about that. Box office is something that I've always been fascinated with and i used to do updates but you know ever since the pandemic i kind of stopped doing those so let me know if you guys would like to see that and a uh, couple more questions here and if we get any super chats otherwise i will be letting you guys go for the remainder of the day all right so we've got um view would give uh, we're given the chance to direct a movie uh what would the movie what would be the movie you do and why well i'd start with this just a small scaled thriller a small scaled thriller and then eventually terraform it's my sci-fi film I'm working on. It's going to be huge. I just need a large budget, um, huge stars, and credibility in Hollywood. Do I have any of those things? No, but maybe one day. Uh, yes to the box office updates. That would be uh, great. I have another director swap. Coen Brothers, Heller Highwater, David McKenzie's No Country. Right off the bat, I would go Coen Brothers, Heller Highwater, because No Country is almost flawless, in my opinion. But David McKenzie's a good director. Do not sleep on David McKenzie. Let me tell you, uh, Hell or High Water is amazing. But I would have to go, uh, Colin Brothers. Uh, Cash, thank you so much for the help, my friend. Um, and let's see. Last question, favorite TV show of the year so far. It's funny you mentioned that. We've got a list coming out, so I can't answer quite yet. We've got a list coming out. Uh, do you think being a fan of the Twilight films, but also loving serious cinema is an issue? No, 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 not, not all. Everyone is subject to their own opinion. But I want to know your thoughts. I don't think so because everyone has that movie or those movies that they care about for very specific and strategic reasons. And like my wife, I don't think she's a cinema holic. I don't think she is like super addicted like I am, but she loves Twilight. But she also really likes great movies. So I don't think it's a bad thing. I will disagree with you. I think the Twilight movies are bad, but that doesn't mean you lose your credibility. That doesn't mean that at all. Um, will Terraform have dinosaurs? It can. But no, it will not have dinosaurs. If you guys know what the word terraform is, you could probably get an idea of what my script is. Uh, but it's huge. We're going to make it one day, guys. And it's going to be great. It's going to wipe away all the fears of the apocalyptic end of the world movies being super and ridiculously cheesy and stupid. It's going to be serious. Mm, terraform. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. uh, thoughts on the Batman Catwoman DC controversy. Yazoo23, I don't know anything about that. All I know is that Zack Snyder tweeted something that was very strange. But I didn't know what he was referring to. I don't keep up with that kind of thing. I'm just worried about movies. So I really don't know anything about that. I don't know if I care to learn anything about that, to be honest, just from what I saw. So um, I have no thoughts. And I will not have any thoughts. Because, frankly, it's just not something I care to look into. Uh, so... There you go. Vittorio says, director swap, Coen Brothers, Wind River, Taylor Sheridan's No Country. Again, off the bat, Coen Brothers, yes, Wind River, feels like it fits in their filmography, so that's my answer. Um, Taylor Sheridan's amazing. I did not love his movie this year, though. I did not love his movie, which was very surprising. Wind River is a gem. It's very, very good. I would go Coen Brothers, um, Wind River, though. Absolutely, Vittorio. Thank you so much for the super chat. Great question. I love these director swaps. Let's see. Um, Brandon, the funny thing is I know the Twilight films are poorly made and cheesy, but I find them to be comfort films. Um, it, it can't help. I, I can't love them. Here's the thing, Brandon. They are, in a way, comfort films for a lot of people. Now, a lot of people don't see the flaws. My wife sees the flaws. She understands. But her answer always is, I read the books. I grew up with Twilight. I love them. And you know what? Who am I to say she can't do that? Who am I to be the, the, the jerk that says you can't enjoy a movie because you have nostalgia for it because you read the book? That is not me. I refuse to be that guy. Um, so, yeah, you're absolutely, absolutely allowed to love them for what they are. Um. I just finished watching Spider-Man 3. Thanks for joining, by the way. I uh, love the first half of the movie until Emo Peter Parker came. I'm doing a review of Spider-Man 3 right now. Yeah, yeah, it's a mixed bag for me. There's some great things. I love Sandman, his story. But the movie as a whole is just kind of, um, kind of not the best. But I still stick by Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. And I love him so, so much. All right, guys. I think that's going to be the last question of the day here. Um... 
I, I've got to get going. My wife's probably waiting for me upstairs, but hey, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, no more questions, unfortunately, but my God, I could sit here and answer your all's questions all day because you guys are just freaking awesome, man. You are awesome. And we're going to do this again next week, but come back. I'm working on some great videos for you. I think I am going to do a box office update. If I can squeeze it in a little bit later today, I think I'm going to do a box office update for you guys. Best shows of the year so far. That video is coming. And uh, of course, I'm watching Black Widow tomorrow. So you guys may, well, I should be, <laughs> Disney, come on. I uh, should be watching Black Widow tomorrow. Uh, so you guys may see a review from me on Tuesday. So be on the lookout for all of those things. Huh? As always, guys, you know, when you watch my videos and you support it with the thumbs up, means the world to me. Um, even if you don't actually like, oh, this is not the best video I've ever watched. But even if you just drop a thumbs up, it really does help this channel. And because of you guys and because of your help and support, um, it is pushing me to that ever so coveted 100K. And if we get there, um, we will get there because of you all. So I just want to say thank you um, on all the videos that you all watch, on all the videos that you all support. I think that is still what I'm striving to do and be because I, that right now, that's the distinction is a lot of these bigger YouTubers is they get a ton of likes on their videos and I get a great amount, but I just don't get as many as I, I think are required to get me to that next level. So with your all support, I think we can get there. I know we can get there. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting me to where we are right now. Okay. Suck back into the douchebag persona. Psh, yeah. No, you guys really are the best. Uh, so I appreciate it. Um, this is the best video I've watched today yes desert fox 2000 i always say that about stuff i'm like man this is the best meal i've had today and no one ever really notices that i say that it's my joke they don't ever notice uh patreon live stream this week yeah we're gonna try to do that uh we're gonna try to do that watch along too with freaks so we'll see see you take care um and um see you next time you guys really are amazing so i'm gonna play you guys off let me know in the comments down below what are you doing today what what does the rest of your day look like um are you coming back for the box office update and uh what do you what, what, what's what's going on this week in your lives i would love to know all of those things all right thank you guys again and let's go ahead and play you off gonna get there austin for sure thank you have a top take thank you so much i appreciate that going to like all your videos now. <laughs> Thank you, excellent, Leon. No, you don't have to waste your time on all of that. Um, just the future vids, but again, I, I appreciate that so much. It means the world. Um, McGuire meme. You're trash. Mr. Krabs. We got Toby McGuire mixed with SpongeBob over here. You're trash. Uh, <laughs> goodness gracious. What would you do if, if, if Dune was horrible? Oh, I'd be devastated. Devastated. Yeah, a lot of films disappoint. But, uh, man, let me tell you, that's that's one. If it disappoints, I'm going to be absolutely devastated. Cash says 100K for sure very soon. Oh, I would love it, Cash. That would be amazing. Uh, w, A, thank you so much. Um, uh, F9 is probably the dumbest movie I've ever seen, but I enjoyed every minute of it. Hey, that's fair. That's very fair. I, I completely agree with the dumbness, but um, didn't quite enjoy it as much as I wanted to. But, hey, it, it is very much a movie you can enjoy. Have a great Sunday. Thank you so much. Should I watch the original Dune? I, I'll be honest. It does get you to kind of what this new Dune's going to be all about, but I don't love the original. I don't love it. And I've read half the book, and it's very um, cheesy compared to the book. Good looking forward to the box office updates. Thank you so much, Yeti Fawn. Thoughts on Modern Family? What I've seen, I've enjoyed, but I haven't watched a ton. So we will see. Great stream. Have a great day. So glad we got to interact. Absolutely, Brandon. I, I love this. is the one time I can actually you know learn more about you guys and, and answer your questions. So I, this is my favorite time of the week. Would you say the fast and furious is the most anime non anime franchise? Yes. Yes. Um, only two dislikes this week. Someone's moving up in the world. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, I've, I've been getting that, uh, that third disliker. He's been popping up, but today maybe, uh, you know, I say that now he's probably here right now and he'll probably dislike the video. Um, <laughs> Oh boy, guys, that's okay. Hey, he's as long as you're watching. As long as you're watching, uh, have a great day. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks for answering my questions. Of course, of course, I I try to answer as many as I see. I know I don't get to everybody, but um, we'll, we'll see. Have fun watching Black Widow tomorrow. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Thank you, Cash. I'm excited. I got back in time for the end credits. And yes, yes. Uh, please watch my video. Feedback too would be nice. Have you watched Peaky Blinders? Um, so then check out my Peaky Blinders vid. Oh. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I love Peaky Blinders. I might have to check that out, Roman. I might have to check that out. Um, 
My wife is currently watching right now, by the way, and she is loving it. She just got to Tom Hardy, and she loves Tom Hardy. A little bit too much, honey. I just arrived. Lion King, welcome. Sorry, we're about to leave, but welcome. Uh, do you have a good feeling about the MCU Phase 4? I have a good feeling, not a great feeling. It's it's a little worrisome, you know, to match up to the greatness that we just got, but uh, we'll see. I hope Tony will be in Black Widow. Maybe. It's very possible. Imagine trying to turn Vin Diesel into an anime cartoon. I can see. Just seeing. <laughs> just seeing that movie, man. Uh, I could see that movie being an anime. Uh, you lucky bastard. I just want a screen for Black Widow not to review. Uh, just got to see. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. I hope it's good. I'm a little worried, but I hope it's good. And uh, let's do one more here. Let's wait for one more to pop up. And that'll be the last one. And then I, my wife and I, we will go and get our work done because we have things to do. Um, actually, you know what? We may not have another one. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it as always. For all no, wait, no, we got more. We got more. Hang on. Dexter spinoff. Yes. Gonna watch Black Widow. Uh tomorrow. How's your day been? Awesome. No dislikes today. Really? Really? Oh, that's crazy. Roman. No way. Well, I I somebody just told me I had to, but it's all right. It's they always, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious when it's within the first five seconds of my video that they don't watch the video, but that's okay. Hey, that's YouTube for you. That's the way it goes. Hey, hey, yeah, there you go. See, that's why I like this part. I like this part. This, this is when I get to actually talk to people. Um, did you check out my Patreon message by now? Oh, gosh. No, maybe not. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> Mike said, well, I just like, so at least one. Mike, Jack on it, Mike. Son of a. <laughs> oh, it's okay, Mike. Um, last question. Do you like theme parks? Yes. And I might be going to Universal in a couple weeks. Let's go. All right, guys.